But when the uh, U.S. and other countries began negotiating the post-Second War II global economic forum, the global economic system we call the Bretton Woods systems today, there was a huge battle inside the United States uh, policymakers. In fact, at the conference where uh, what was called the International Trade Organization, which evolved to be the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which is now the World Trade Organization, um, the U.S. State Department advocated a complete and total free trade position on agriculture. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and other uh, policymakers argued that that would be disastrous for the whole world. That policy, which was uh, warred in the larger political debates in the late 40s and 50s, by the early 1970s, the United States had begun to dismantle those policies. The crisis for farmers was very apparent. Uh, there was a new round of promises that we would export our way to heaven. And in fact, the most important of those single reports that came out during the Nixon administration advocated that the U.S. approach to our growing trade deficit. Keep in mind, the U.S. didn't have trade deficits until the 1960s, or at least for 100 and some years, was that the U.S. should specialize in, in exporting the two things that we were the most successful in. One, high-tech weaponry. Two, basic agriculture products, primarily corn. Our, our country doesn't make a lot of things anymore, but one thing it does make is a lot of weapons. I was recently with Oregon, in Oregon, and I was talking to a group, and little did I know that there was an engineer in the room who was working in a drone factory that was right in that area. And he asked if we could stay after and talk anonymously. And he told me how he and his friends in the factory felt horrible about what they were doing. But he said, find me a civilian use for my talents. Find me a place where I can go to work and use what I have learned in a way that's going to help people. And that's what I want to do, but I can't find those jobs. They are just not there. And that we have searched for a way to make this technology uh, viable for civilian uses, positive civilian uses, and it's just not there because the military have so much money they could just throw around, and that's what makes this sustainable. And the fact that we are still spending over 50% of our discretionary funds on the Pentagon while our country is suffering from this tremendous crisis and we don't have the ability to create jobs for people who want to work to do the positive things for people, that we don't have the money to put into the vital needs to turn our country into one that's based on a clean, green economy that can save us from the boiling of our planet uh, is because the Pentagon is still sucking so much of our resources into the military.